Hey, I'm Steve. And I'm Sean. Welcome back to Media's High Five. So, Steve, what are we going to talk about today? I think we're going to talk about hacking. Hacking? Yes, internet hacking it's specifically. Internet hacking, not yes. like, like through books or something? Or? <laughs> no, and not with a machete or anything like that Not either. hacking people up and burying no. their bodies in your backyard. No, and not hacky sacking as Jason thought it was. Oh, okay. So, no, specifically hacking websites. These notes are no good then. No, we um, can go ahead and delete that part. <laughs> or, sorry, erase it. This is not on, this is not digitized. We couldn't afford that. So, um, why don't you kind of start us off a little bit with, you know, what is hacking? Um, how does one get hacked? Okay, well, I'll give a little bit of an overview because there's sort of two basic ways that um, your website can get hacked. Um, is one, which is what actually would be more referred to as traditional hacking, is there's actually a flaw in the way your site works that allows people to access it when they shouldn't. There's some sort of bug in the software, and it lets people get it admin, or it lets them change your data. Um, it lets them get in there through an intrinsic flaw in the way everything is set up. Mm. Um, the other way is someone just basically guesses your password. Um, hmm. which isn't so much hacking, but we'll cover it under here because it's a way that um, someone you don't want to can get access to your site. So I wanted to give a general overview that those are um, two basic ways that um, people can hack your site. Got it. Mm -hmm. So you armed me with three pieces of knowledge for this episode that mm -hmm. we have for passwords. We have, you can get through with brute force. Mm -hmm. We can get through th social engineering mm -hmm. and through phishing. Yes. Not traditional phishing, not with a rod. No but through internet phishing. Yes, technically phishing with a PH. Yes, mm. you wrote it with an F, so I was a little confused. I, I, I got excited. Okay, so. so why don't you start with brute force? Um, so brute force is just trying many, 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 many passwords um, as fast as you can, just guessing, just guessing 1111, 1112, 1113. Like, mm -hmm. um, it's not quite like that. Usually they have a list of sort of common passwords um, that you use, but you just try as many of them as fast as you can um, to try to guess the right one. You don't have a, a particular strategy. I mean, you're using a big uh, list of probably 100,000 common passwords that has been put together, and you just hit them as fast as possible. Um, it's not that effective necessarily, um, although it will get common passwords. Um, you know, if you have ones that are right on the top of that list, if your password is password, if your password is secret, if your password is one, two, three, four, five, um, you will probably get hacked that way. Um, usually that's mitigated by you just uh, limit the number of password attempts that are available and you block someone who tries to, uh, trying to log in a thousand times is never legitimate. Um, trying to log in five times is maybe legitimate. So um, that's a fairly easy way to negate that one, but that uh, doesn't always get done. So about debit cards. <laughs> Can you uh, tell us how many digits you have on your debit card in no, terms of your password? I'm not telling that to everyone. How many digits you Way use? Way more than you. Okay. <laughs> so if I use four digits and my password happens to be one, two, three, four, yours is a little bit more complex than that? Yes, although complexity of a, of a length is better than a complexity of the password, like um, picking 7483 is mm. not really that much of a better password. But, but length, that also applies online, is it not? Rather than more of a complex complex, you know, digit or sign or something like that? Yeah, um, it's been a really big thing lately, or not even lately, in the last 10 years to say, oh, use numbers, use uppercase, lowercase, use symbols. Um, that doesn't help that much. It helps a bit. Um, having a longer password is much more important than having uh, a really complicated, a really complicated six digit password is shittier than a simple eight digit password. Mm. Adding a few more digits makes your password way more complicated as long as it's not one of like a simple word, but if you just put like, put three words together, mm -hmm. way better password than eight confusing characters. And no one can remember underscore dollar sign, capital T four, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't mean anything, but if you have a sentence that you can remember, um, you know, or three or four random words, um, way more secure, way easier to remember. The, the whole uh, using extra characters thing is, mm -hmm. I guess, comes from a time when like we were limited. You were limited to maybe ten characters for your password because of really old systems. This is like 10, 20 years ago. So, question: Why is it that you know a lot of sites nowadays, when you go and you create an account, why don't they just let you have longer passwords rather than requiring you to have capitalizations and symbols and all that? I don't know, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Um, it's it's getting that way a bit better. Is that usually, honestly, they'll say like please have at least six digits, mm -hmm. and actually the password thing will let you use a, 
a 120 character password. Um, nobody ever tries normally um, because you've been, you know, everyone's been conditioned to use these short little confusing passwords. Um, so it's oftentimes available, but for some reason that's become sort of the standard. Oh, everyone knows that's a good password. Wrong. That's not true. Length makes it more complicated than um, complexity. You maybe like if you have 30 characters and then you have 60, you make those twice as complex. You know, you make each uh, digit twice as complicated to guess. But if you just add more digits, it's way harder to guess an additional digit than it is to guess a few more options in okay. the same thing. So I feel like we got off the wagon here a little bit. So let's get back on it. Um, let's talk about social engineering. Okay, um, this is actually the most common uh, way to hack someone, especially if you're trying to hack, uh, if someone's trying to hack something specific. Um, brute force password and stuff, oftentimes they'll just try to hit any site they can find. Um, social engineering is the most successful way to hack a specific site. And basically what that means is you... you Peer pressure. Try to get a, uh, there's a few different ways. You try to get a password from someone. You try mm. to call up and you try to intimidate them. Oh, okay. So you say, you know, um, you know, you pretend to be an angry customer or you mm. pretend to be a supervisor from a different department mm -hmm. and you demand that the password be reset. Um, you know, and people will panic and reset the password for you. Yeah. Or you call in and you pretend to be a very confused customer and you just need help and people are really into helping you. Usually that's their job. They're mm -hmm. a customer service person. Their job is to help you. Um, and so you call in, you're like, oh, I'm very sorry, you know, and I, and I screwed up my password, and can you please help me, and it's really important, I'm going to yeah. lose my job, and you, you give a big sob story, and then they just reset your password for you. But it's not your password. And, it's uh, someone's password that you're stealing. Like, I, I remember one that was kind of going around, too, which was, uh, hey, your, your computer has a virus, let us help you get it off, etc. Yeah, and I mean, any way to, social engineering is any sort of way to, to con you it, okay. into giving up your password. Got it. Um, that uh, some of the virus stuff falls a little bit more under phishing, um, yeah. which we'll which we'll get to in okay. a bit. But it's um, the social engineering way is just you can. It doesn't require any clever hacking. It literally requires like calling someone up on the phone or just sending them an email. You don't need these fancy computer skills. You mostly just need to be persuasive over the phone, um, or in person, or anything. Right. Um, there's even a, a for social engineering. They did a test. Um, a security firm came into a corporation and they did a big lecture on mm -hmm. password security and, and don't give your password to anyone and all this stuff and and you know be careful of what you use on the computer and everything and then they went out into the parking lot after the test and they uh, dumped a bunch of flash drives with uh, basically a, a test sort of hacking uh, program on it and I think within an hour after mm -hmm. the presentation like five or six staff members had picked up this USB key plugged it into their work computer and oh, given wow. the testing com or giving the security company full access to their computers it was just a test but yeah. it's ways like that are way easier to hack things than um, finding this difficult security flaw and exploiting it mm -hmm. um, you just can dupe someone into stuff really easily so um, the last one being phishing um, you know from what I understand with that is it's some way in which you know you're given maybe a link that's maybe a false link to something like you know it's if you know going to a royal bank as an example mm -hmm. you're giving maybe like a royal bank and it's a long URL that maybe has maybe something wrong with it or it's a, a mm -hmm. website that's to look like another site um, what else yeah I mean it'll be exactly like that it's it's to try to get you to put in your information in a site that you believe is legitimate okay. and it isn't actually um, and so banks and PayPal are very common uh, targets of that. You, people, you've probably all gotten an email that says, oh, PayPal, log in here to like confirm your account information or something. That's not a thing PayPal sends out. That's someone else, it probably has like a, a URL that looks kind of right. It's paypal2.eu or something mm -hmm. kind of, that seems kind of legit, but a little weird at the same time. And they will build the site to look exactly like PayPal. And it will probably even redirect you to PayPal afterwards. afterwards so they can be very sneaky, so you just, mm. you, you're on their site for only when you put your password in and then they pass you along and so you're not actually aware anything's gone wrong, but they've skimmed your password um, during that time. And so a lot of that will come through email and they'll try to prompt you to log in through their um, bad link. And that's uh, a very common way, especially to get sort of less tech, tech savvy mm -hmm. people because if you're not paying attention to the URL very specifically. Um, a, a quick tip on that just before we sure. go is never click on those links in the email. Um, if like PayPal or someone like sent you that link and you're not sure if it's true, just actually go to PayPal. Open your browser and type paypal.com and go in there because that's, you've done it right, that's fine. And then if it doesn't have anything in there, it was just a scam. Um, avoid, if you're unsure, avoid the links in the emails. Before we wrap up, do you wanna talk about maybe how hacking doesn't work? Yeah. Might, so, so it's like, it's not exactly <laughs> like if you have, you know, there's a, there's a breach in the database 
we got a keyboard here. I'm on one side, you're on the other. We're counter hacking the hacker. Yeah, we're just gonna hack as fast as we can to out hack the hacker. Yeah, zeros none, and ones. None, none of that is just true. coming down. Yeah, you you you're not even really gonna see like a hack in progress or something like that. Um, you you might see hacking attempts in progress. It's not something that you counter by typing really fast. Most of the time, you counter it with automated tools set up ahead of time and you can't there's this sort of myth too that like anything can be hacked mm -hmm. that's not really true um, anything could have a security flaw in it that could be discovered that doesn't mean it does or that anyone knows about it you couldn't just point at one website and be like hack that website you could try some standard ways of hacking it but it might not work if you yeah. keep your site up to date you know you've, you've done sort of what you can and you are as immune to hacking as anyone else is so, you know, we, we merely scratched the surface on hacking today. You know, we'll probably have to talk about that later. But mm -hmm. for what we have today, do you want to maybe give a summary of too long, didn't read of what we talked about? Yeah, um, two ways of hacking, uh, guessing your password and actually exposing a security flaw. Um, and just have long passwords. That's real simple. Cool. Well, you know, if what we talked about today, guys, was uh, interesting at all, um, please subscribe to our channel. We're looking for more subscribers. We're at like 50 or so. We could use a few more. Um, and if you have a question or you want to make a comment, please do, so, please do so below. Anything you want to add? Um, follow us on Facebook and uh, read our blog at acromedia.com. Cool. Signing out.